Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we're going to be taking the new semi truck that I'm developing and adding a feature that will help it tow heavy loads, especially up hills. And this feature is going to be to add motors in the trailer and have them turn on automatically when the truck is struggling, especially in an uphill incline. Obviously, I don't want it running all the time in the case of draining the battery, so it's only going to be kicking on if needed. Uh, currently, the setup is that the truck is pulling all the weights. So these six truck tires or semi truck tires are the ones that have all the power and the trailers themselves are more or less just dumb wheels that just roll around. They do have brake capabilities though. And if we brake, you see the lights turn on in the back and all the trailers do have brakes. But in the instance of going uphill or finding yourself on an incline, especially when all these trailers have full um, load. They're fully loaded up with diesel right now. So it is, you'll see on this uphill, we're going to struggle a little bit. If you get good speed, you can make it. Now this truck is my newest release, actually pre-release. Oh, so we're dropping, dropping, dropping. Oh, we just barely made it. Okay, so we didn't even make it. If I had a, I did do it earlier. With a higher speed, you can actually make it up. So in this case, we don't even make it up. Now this engine is powerful. It's a 16 cylinder engine. So it's a very heavy duty engine. And without the trailer, you can see that this truck is very nimble and very fast almost too fast, but the gearing ratio is such that it is intended for towing. But if I just show you here, look at that. It's a drag racer, this one. So it's definitely very fast, but that's not the intention of it. Its intention is to tow things. Now I do have an existing microcontroller that I've developed over time and there's one in the trailers themselves as you can see here and there's one in the truck right here that is the truck composite controls now because i've gotten better and more skilled i realized that some of this stuff could have been optimized a little bit more so we're going to see how we could take this existing system and add the capability of having motors in the trailer without ruining the fact that if a truck does not have that capability, I still want it to be compatible. So I want backwards compatibility for all my creations and all my trailers, but only in the case that a trailer is equipped with the motor function, then and only then will the mode still work. So it's gonna be easy to add it to the trailers as you can see here, we have this area so we can easily throw in a pipe. Now I'm just curious and wondering what the proper amount of power will be. Will we need a motor for each wheel? I think that's going to be a little excessive, but maybe a motor for each axle will be good. So I'm going to go ahead and add this. And I'm going to go put a motor and a motor. Okay. Now that's in the very back trailer in this trailer here. I also want to add motors, but I don't want there to be, um, four motors. I'd prefer to keep it two motors per trailer. So I'm just going to go put it here on this axle and oh, definitely not in the right place drop it down one level, paste it there. There we go. So I've added it to this axle, these two axles and these back two are just kind of trailing along. So the tra the, the uh, motors are there. Obviously you have to give it power. So each uh, trailer has power coming from the connector node that it compares with the truck. So that's easy to do, but obviously that's all just getting the uh, backbone established for this system. Now the real meat of it will come with fine tuning the microcontrollers 
without ru ruining the backwards compatibility. So I'm just going to drag it out here so it's easier to work on. I think the basis will be the truck microcontroller. So right now our truck microcontroller consists of a few things. If we go right here, you can see that it consists of a throttle in, a trailer composite and handbrake. Now these are all vital. Next, first thing I'm going to do is rev this up to V3 and add my little three here. And the reason for keeping track of that is just so you and or I, not you, but I know which is the latest microcontroller for a series. So if a truck has a V3, that's the latest one. And this is going to include the trailer electric motors with with trailer electric motors. Okay. Really, this microcontroller is good enough. And what it, what I mean by good enough is it detects throttle in, it detects if you're braking. So that's the key here. It only is intended for braking. That's the current system we have. So if you're braking, it will break. And I just want to fix this up. So it will break with a value of 0 0.04 until you've reached 2.5 seconds, at which point it's going to break with 100% value. Now this I can even remove because that doesn't do anything, it's automatically zero. So this is just wet, so if you're throttling down, so if you're braking, this turns on, and then if it's longer than 2.5 seconds, it will fully go to point to one, meaning it'll be fully stopped. Now here we have our handbrake, and that just goes to the trailer, and we also now have our light. So if you are braking, this input one is the brake lights. Now I realize that I should have done that in the trailer controller itself. That shouldn't be dictated by the truck controller, which is what I consider this, but I don't want to change it. Like I said, I don't want to lose backwards compatibility. So I will just have to live with this right now, unless I want to go and update all of my vehicles and all of my trucks, which I don't really want to do. So we're going to leave this as it is. Now, what's important to note here is that the throttle in is only for braking. And this is what goes into this number here. So what I need to do first is make one that is if you are throttling up. Okay. So that is going to be if you're trying to give it power. So if it's between 0 0.1 and a high of one, I am in fact throttling up. And I'm going to put that up here. So what we're going to do in this case is add a second or a third um, switch box. And that switch box will be powered up when you are throttling up. So we'll put the off path here and connect it to this. And it will be switched. So the on path is a value that I want when it is being throttled up. Now, what is kind of funky about all this is if you are pressing brake and gas at the same time, it will sort of freak out the controller and it will end up throttling it up. So you will not get brake power, but that's sort of a user error. I mean, if you're driving a car and you're pressing gas and brake, you can't be expected to be stopping. So if you're pressing up and down, then you're going to run into problems. But in this case, our if you're throttling up, you're putting it into this value and you're going to be giving the, th the trailer power is what I'm going to say. Now there is one issue. What if I want to reverse? Okay. If I'm reversing, I'm technically giving it throttle up, but I'm going in the negative direction. So that's one reason we have to add one single logic node here. And that is going to be reverse, reverse input and pretty much what I'm going to have to do is go find my reverse path. So in my vehicle itself, now the easiest way to do it is go to the, um, back, the backup light or reverse light and just find the node here and add it to here. So that's my reverse input. Now, by the way, this is a new truck. It's not released. It is the stockyard, the buckle stockyard, it is a very powerful semi truck and it has a sleeper. So just a little FYI, what we're working with here. Now we go back into this. 
and we'll continue. So we've now added, if it's being reversed, to find the reverse here, but we do have it. Okay, it was up there, so if we reverse. Now, if you are throttling in, so this, and if it's not reverse, so and, so throttling in and not reverse, meaning if it's in reverse, I don't want this to be working. So if you're throttling up, that up and you're not in reverse, then in fact, give us this. Now this number here is gonna be a value that I wanna set. So it'll be um, electric, electric motor Excel, acceleration value or speed value or power value, really electric motor value or throttle there, electric motor throttle. And let's try with four. That may be too powerful or too much. So we'll have to fine tune that as needed, but this is now in the truck. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this. Now the beauty of this is other than the size of this controller, I didn't actually change the functionality. So if you're still down, like throttling down, it works the exact same way. So it should be backwards compatible in this case. Now let's go see what's in here. So we have something in the way, but luckily this block is free and we could drag this back into there and down and settle it in. So what's nice about this truck, actually, I'm going to do a little bit more showing off is all the microcontrollers are in the cabin and in the cab. So the back will be very easy to retrofit into any type of configuration, be it a tow truck breaker truck or like any type of box truck or cargo truck. It'll be easy to retrofit. I won't have to redo everything, which is the current case in the buckle stampede. So here we have electric motor throttle. We have our brake value. Um, that is all good and it's being sent to here which is our trailer hitch and now it's being sent into here so the next one i have to adjust is the actual trailer so trailer brake lights i've gone ahead and revved this up and i'm just going to put with trailer motor power so we've revved it up. I've added the four symbol. I'm just going to add a little arrow here pointing at the trailer. Perfect. So now in this case, we have taillights, leg pivot, variable brake, deploy leg button, trailer connector, and handbrake. So in this case, I actually do have to add one more. Now before doing that, I do want to yank it out of here just in case I end up, um, well, no, it seems to work. Regardless which way it goes, they're just regular blocks. You just have to be careful when you're expanding these things that you may end up deleting something next to it. But in this case, we've checked that there is nothing next to it other than regular blocks. So now here, I'm just going to go add a number output going to my trailer. So this or going to my electric motors. So trailer electric motors. Okay. Now, with that done, go add them in. So, one thing we now know is if we are sending, well, composite one is now what's going to the brake or going to the, um, going to the brake and the trailer motor. Okay. So in this case, it's coming as a brake value or braking value, but it's coming in here. Now, if we go back and jump to this, really what should happen is it should automatically define whether it is accelerating or not. And that's the number it's going to send to us. So it's either going to send us the number of the electric motor throttle in the case it's 0.3, or it's going to send us this. Now that is a little confusing actually for the, the trailer controller because it's coming in as positive numbers in both cases, meaning it's coming as either one or 0.04 or 0.3.
if to the electric motor so that's not great in fact that's problematic because now we're going to be receiving in our trailer just n positive numbers that do not define whether we're trying to brake or not but i guess one thing i can do now is piggy bank or piggyback not piggy bank piggyback off the tail light so the fact is if we are throttling down tail lights turn on which is our input one so what the way i'm going to do it and like i'm trying to do just this very simple retrofit i don't want to go and adjust too many things so we know if we're tail tail light on that means we are braking if we're not tail light on that means we're trying to accelerate so fairly simple actually with that in mind we come here and now we know if the tail lights are on we are trying to brake so i'm going to grab this and now the way we're going to have it is this button here or this will be engaged in the case of taillights being on so if it is if the taillights are on then i want it to go to the on value so that case what this is what happens so taillights are on means we're braking means that it turns this switch box on and it's going to be going to the brakes. Perfect. So that should have re that should resolve that issue. Now, if taillights are not on, then I need it to go to the motors. So, same thing. If taillights are not on, now one th problem I, s I foresee here is that in this case it's going to constantly be giving us power to these motors which is not what I want to do, okay? So if, I, I'm just going to verify this. So if taillights are not on, then turn this thing into the on position. So in that case, give power to the electric motors. So this should work. But like I said, the issue here is that now we're constantly giving power to these uh, motors, even in normal driving which may drain our battery very fast so here there's nothing we can do because technically there is no rpms or rps there's nothing that tells us you know turn on these motors so it seems that in this case we're just going to have to live with it like this so what we'll have to adjust now is the truck composite trailer controls okay so now we're actually touching back on back to this base where we adjust this so we're giving the electric motor the throttle but now i want to actually have a button that tells us enable trailer oh my goodness enable trailer power or trailer motor power okay or trailer boost i like that trailer motor boost it's boosting us so with that done now, we can add that into this little mix, okay? So in this case, if the throttle in is this, and we're not reversing, but now we have to add a second and, so if the throttle is this and enable trailer motor boost, then this is all good. So I've just loaded that up. Obviously it's a little longer, it's a little clunkier to fit in, but now we have everything added for what we need other than now connecting your enable trailer motor boost now where i'd like to see that is actually in this center here where we have the button for quad steer and i'm going to have a button for enable trailer electric motor boost okay make that a button toggle channel four and let's hope that this can fit it and no it can't so i've actually gone and reduced the size of this instrument panel so it only had the three and of course i now have to have four so this may play with things a little bit oh we're already good to go so all i have to do is expand the length 
done and add that number four to our composite controller. So enable trailer boost and there it is. So can we put it back into the truck is what I need to confirm now. It should be able to fit. It looks like I had a little bit of space actually. Let's see. Nice. That is the good thing about having a little bit bigger cab. So that just fit even with that extra size, extra one size. There we go. So this should be complete and ready to test. With the exception of one thing, I have to connect the motors to this microcontroller and likewise in this one. So I need to update it to the new one, which is trailer composite controls, number V4, update, and give this to the motors. Now while I'm at it, to be honest, one thing that I want to do since I'm already at it having a spare spot, I would like to add backup um, lights to this to the trailers because currently they just look like this. In fact, this one doesn't even have lights, but this because it's only intended to be pulled in the middle. But to this one, I could easily add lights in these slots and they'd be turning on when you're backing up. So it may be something that I add, but for the case of this example, let's give this a test. Okay. First things first, I'm going to raise these trailer legs. Now underneath here, we can actually go to no clipping and come up in this little slot potentially. Oh, or fall into the depths of the earth. That's definitely not where we want to go. Okay, we'll do the test and we'll see what happens. So in this case now, it should not be giving power to these wheels. So it's still only my truck. But if I press this button, now they're not skidding, so I can't quite tell if they're working or not, which is actually problematic. So I need to go and get myself a physical sort of view on whether they're working. I mean, I do want to test up the hill, but I'd like to know a confirmation. So what I'm actually going to do is give the electric motor throttle one. So a full 100% throttle will be going to these. Now, something else that I just noticed that may be also problematic is this microcontroller does not sense if the engine's on. So I'm thinking if I start pressing the acceleration button that the trailers are going to want to go. And in that case, I do have to add a key on function. So I'm pressing up right now. Nothing's happening. Okay, now we're on. We're, we're neutral. Nothing's happening. So I'm thinking that it's not working, actually. Unless where we're getting fed the throttle is from the cruise control, which would actually be ideal. Now I don't see that they're spinning. Now something's not right, so just for the sake of diagnosing this problem, I'm going to add an on-off output that is only going to be enabled when my motors should be on. And the only reason I'm going to do that is so I can put myself a little light somewhere and have that tell me that it is in fact at least the path is in the right place so that's the first step so that's on so that's saying that currently because we're not pressing well the acceleration or throttle shouldn't be passing through because what I have here is if the, well, no, I have here, if the brake lights or tail lights are not being pressed, enable this. So that's absolutely right. So brake lights are not being pressed. We are now having the light on. If I go into the cab and press the brakes, that light should go off. Perfect. Okay, so the path is going to the trailer. We delete that. We don't need that anymore. 
about what we do need and also we need to remove the input here because that's not needed so we know that this works so this this controller works it's pretty much enabling this which is now bringing in this read value from the trailer or from the cab so then the issue may be with this one here which is if we're throttling in with a positive value and this enable trailer motor boost is on and we're not in reverse then go here and switch it from this value to this value here and send it into input one so that all looks good to me to be honest so we'll find out where the problem is coming from are all these connected that's a good thing to test first the composite is connected to there the composites are connected to there and here all this good stuff I guess I know what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna test out to see if I throw it into reverse does my light turn on then all right all right we're in reverse we're in gear so while we're in reverse we see the reverse lights turn on There we go, so now the light's coming on. Beautiful, because I'm throttling up, except if I put it in reverse. So it was a user error. In reverse, they do not come on. In power, they do. Now, like I said, the issue with all this is that I see that in fact, this will come on even if we are in neutral, this will come on even if the car is off. So I have to add something for that. Now, yes, you could say it's user error and user stupidity if they will put on the boost controller in the neutral gear. Like, you'd have to be smart about it, at least from a user standpoint. But just to prevent that type of thing, I do think that this would be wise to be at least the ignition. Because if it's at least the ignition, the, the truck's on. Now, whether you're in neutral that's your own fault but at least the truck will be on so in this case i'm gonna have another and here saying if all this happens then do this okay we can remove the light that was from here and put this on the key input ignition key so now a series of things has to happen in order for you to have this um, throttle. Now, last test I want to have is just put a simple light up here with the threshold. And this will just serve as my final test. So to the motors, if it is from zero point Technically, this one should be one in one because right now I'm trying to boost the power a whole one. And so this will turn on when this is reading one. Just give it electrical power. Okay. Let's see. This should be the final test. This should determine whether or not this thing works. So if I press accelerate now, nothing happens. If I turn on the key, press accelerate the light still does not go on but if I press enable trailer boost so it is actually reading that it is giving us a positive throttle or it's pushing okay now because we have all these handbrakes engaged and the motor is not even f pushing it it seems that it's not working or seems that it's not pushing us which is actually a very good thing um, so that means these little motors down here are in fact receiving that value. So seems that we got it. That that's probably it then. So we check this. And lastly, what we're going to do is, I mean, I did give them power. I did give them electrical, so they should be working. What I want to do is test the truck on the uphill. We're going to leave this as one 
and then let's take the truck out on the road. So raise the trailer wheels. Okay, we sit down in here. Now, if I turn this on and push this, technically we should be moving. There we go, yes. Okay, so it is giving us some power from the trailers. It's just the handbrakes were preventing it because the handbrakes actually apply to the trailer and the cab. So they do give us a little bit of power. Not that much, but that's okay. The intention is not to have them push us. It's to have them supplement the uh, except the climbing up of hills. So let's see, in this case, can they supplement us? If we go to climb up this hill now, with our little trailers pushing, There we have it. So we got up the hill with not a problem at all. Now, we're not going to go up at any major speeds, but it definitely does supplement the truck's forward motion, and that makes the trailers not just kind of like dumb towing things. Instead, they actually give us help, additional help, and that's in the case of this. So that was actually really cool. It seems that the uh, system worked it worked fairly well now if we turn this off now we're back to not anything but you can see here we actually do lose a lot of battery power so i would highly recommend you not using this mode just for fun this is only really to get yourself out of a pickle if you have to climb up a really steep hill you throw that on but in normal application and normal driving don't have it on you're gonna drain your battery you're gonna end up stranded so that is actually something to consider as well okay so there we have it we actually ended up adding this now it should be backwards compatible because the system does not depend on adjusting any of the existing things it only adds to them so if we use the other truck that does not have this mode then it won't be a problem so i'm actually going to add that as a little disclaimer here to say if equipped because not every trailer has this. Enable trailer mo electric motor boost if equipped. So, perfect. That is it. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you learned something along this journey. I will be uploading this new truck. It's a lot of fun. It's very powerful. And I will be fixing these trailers with this additional feature. I'll probably not be updating the Stampede semi-truck with this mode. So if you are t using that as your tow vehicle, you will not get this. That is gonna be an added benefit of this uh, stockyard. So Buckle Stockyard will have the feature to have the boost. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more, stay tuned for videos, creations, all sorts of cool stuff on the Discord server. Thank you for watching and as always, happy stormworksing.